Now let's talk a little bit about sleep deprivation since again that seems to be a primary mover and shaker uh, at least uh, on college campuses today and the effect that it has. Now I know I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to uh, people that really don't believe that it affects them um, but there is such a thing as a sleep debt and workers that are working um, around the clock experience this. So after a succession of five hour nights, um, we can't repay that debt with just one long sleep. Uh, these workers are uh, Chinese workers that are uh, in earthquake relief over the summer in Colorado. We saw the, uh, the uh, hot shots um, who were working on the uh, fire up in Waldo Canyon outside of um, Colorado Springs. And I remember one, um, uh, one image of the firefighters sleeping on, on the road so that they were closest to uh, where they were needed. Uh, but again, it's one of those things where uh, we're not gonna be able to repay the sleep debt in just one long sleep. The issue is consistency over time, essentially. So when we talk about sleep deprivation and the impact that it has on us, um, the sleep loss uh, can have a direct impact uh, on uh, and anybody who has any uh, inclination or um, predisposition. Depression oftentimes gets worse because of sleep deprivation. Uh, students that struggle with depression and are aware of it and will come in off the summer and are well rested and so forth uh, find that their depression seems to get far, far worse as time goes along. Same thing is true with anxiety is that we need a reserve and sleep provides it for us um, and anxiety tends to climb as we get greater and greater uh, sleep deprivation operating. Um, ultimately, the uh, learning and the consolidation of learning is directly affected by sleep def deprivation, which means memory, concentration, uh, learning, um, all of those things um, uh, suffer considerably when we become sleep deprived. And so you pull an all-nighter before a test and in a lot of ways it's the worst thing that you can possibly do partly because you're not going to consolidate whatever it is you've just studied as a result of that. The, the key component that happens with uh, sleep deprivation are two different things that occur. First, uh, what we have is a hunger arousing hormone called ghrelin, G H R E L I N, and sleep deprivation increases this. Uh, that's why oftentimes snacking occurs. Uh, the longer you're um, sleep deprived and you're sta staying up late at night. Um, and the other thing it does is it decreases leptin. So these two work together. Leptin is a um, hormone that is um, uh, hunger suppressing. Uh, so, and a lot of times you'll see it in uh, uh, some of the over-the-counter uh, uh, diet pills, if you will, uh, but leptin is a good example and it suppresses hunger. And so you see, it increases um, hunger arousal, hunger arousal, and it decreases hunger suppression. And they work completely together. And so you wonder, essentially, uh, why uh, the freshman, the legendary, if you will, freshman 15 occurs. Now, actually, it's not a literal 15 pounds but it usually ends up being more like five or six pounds. But the freshman 15, partly because of this whole uh, sleep deprivation and getting accustomed to managing your schedule on your own because you're not spending as much time in class as you do in, um, 
uh, in high school. Uh, sleep produces, has a quite of a protective effect. So the, the brain is one area, the heart is another area that is impacted by sleep. Uh, muscles uh, are, are re recuperate from use, um, even, in, uh, uh, even, even after uh, strenuous activities and things like that. Joints also um, are more, the person is more prone to joint problems because of a lack of sleep. Uh, fat cells themselves, um, it, sleep, one of the things that occurs because it takes care of this ghrelin and leptin is that it, it regulates your metabolism. Um, and then of course the immune system is the other one down here that, that uh, needs to be mentioned is your immune system it gets increasingly compromised with uh, poor sleep, which also mean, means essentially that students end up being sick more because of what happens with uh, sleep deprivation itself. All right, so right here is one of these scenes that I have seen more than I can count. Um, a lot of times if I could find a picture of a kid who has, who looks like three sheets to the wind um, and their eyes are drooping and they're not able to concentrate, a lot of students sometimes find activities that they can engage in uh, to, to try to stay awake and keep their focus. Um, but in spite of that, the thing I want to mention even in these, uh, these two illustrations is to talk a little bit about sleep disorders. There's some key ones that uh, you might see or you might know somebody that suffers from. Uh, certainly insomnia is one of the major ones. Uh, and a lot of times as people grow older, sometimes they, they uh, uh, complain about insomnia. But it's not the occasional inability to fall asleep. It, it really is a persistent problem and not only um, falling asleep, but also staying asleep. So falling asleep is, is a key, but also uh, what you might find is, uh, is that people mention that they can get to sleep, but then they can't stay asleep. And, and many of, some of the medications that we use, we don't use them often, but uh, many of the medications we use um, I actually help people not only get to sleep but stay asleep in, in um, the, the preparation of the drug itself. So insomnia is one of those ones that uh, you hear a lot about. Another one is uh, narcolepsy. And the, the, the case here in narcolepsy is the person has a sudden attack of, it's a sudden onset of sleepiness to the point where they might just completely fall asleep uh, doing things uh, that are dangerous, like driving. And the narcolepsy, sometimes it's one of these things that often runs in, in, uh, um, run in families, but it, it usually lasts somewhere less than, um, less than five minutes. Um, and Narcolepsy uh, can be quite dangerous, uh, partly because of the things that we tend to do as a result of that. Um, the other one that I want to just highlight for you, and I have some personal uh, experience with, is something we refer to as sleep apnea. And increasingly, it has gotten to be with the um, increasing levels of obesity in our, in our country today, sleep apnea has become a greater and greater problem um, because essentially what happens is that the air passage um, um, gets blocked and um, air passage blocked and essentially the person stops breathing. And the, the brain recognizing, remember we had uh, the, the thalamus and the hypothalamus that, that uh, the uh, um, air passage, yeah, there you go, um, the, the monitors the various systems of the body. The air passage gets blocked um, and the person kind of gags uh, uh, and then wakes up and, and then goes back to sleep again 
and it starts all over again. And oftentimes sleep apnea is uh, uh, one of the symptoms, if you will, is snoring itself. And essentially, it can go from uh, a relatively minor um, uh, level of uh, having this happen two or three times in a night to up to 16 and 17 times, even in uh, an hour. Uh, the reason I say that is that I, I've been diagnosed with sleep apnea, and essentially after doing a sleep study, um, they found that I was stopping breathing, uh, you know, uh, 16 to, uh, to 17 times an hour. Um, and it, it was remarkable um, because I would often report that my sleep was not terribly refreshed or refreshing. And um, I, unfortunately, I joke about the fact that I have my snorkel kit that I put on. But essentially, it's a mouth or nose piece that keeps my air passages open. Now, I, 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 don't, I fall into the category of someone who is not necessarily uh, obese enough to be blocking the air passage. It's, one of the, it's a good example of the genetics of sleep. Uh, probably my, one of my parents uh, also had this predisposition to sleep apnea. Uh, the last one that I want to mention, uh, which oftentimes affects kids, actually two, is um, night terrors, which, uh, it, where kids will wake up with a high-pitched scream, and they won't really wake up. Um, they, they experience uh, a little bit like a... Uh, 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 nightmare, but these sleep terrors, night terrors, wake up like I said with this high pitched, high pitched scream, um, and the parents will come in. Actually, their heart rate is probably racing faster than the kids, and um, get them back to sleep. And the kid makes has no recollection of that. The other thing that often happens during this is sleep, uh, walking and talking. Um, <clears throat> and since you guys are rooming together with, with people, you might hear somebody who does a little sleep or talking. Um, and that, too, is part of the NREM sleep disorder uh, where the, it is relatively harmless. Obviously, you can have some people who actually get up and, and walk around and, and uh, fall off a porch or something like that because of their um, how... Um, uh, how oblivious they are to their surroundings because they're asleep. So that's part of the backdrop, if you will, um, with um, sleep and sleep disorders themselves.